Hi, everybody. This is BJ Garrett back again on our Testimony Tuesday program. And tonight I have a sweet friend of mine. Her name is Heather. Heather, welcome to our Testimony Tuesday program. Will you please just kind of introduce yourself briefly for us? For sure. Hi, BJ. Um, thank you so much for having me on uh, this Testimony Tuesday. I feel so honored that I get the opportunity to share my story. Um, as you said, my name is Heather, uh, Heather Devine. I am a mother and a wife. Um, I've been married for almost 16 years this coming December. So I just look forward to many more wonderful years with my husband. Um, I have two teenage boys, Aiden, that's 14, Garrett, that is 17. They are homeschooled and that's that's a chore, but um, I feel honored to be able to do that, and they're doing well in that. Um, other than that, I love to do community service. I love to be around my senior community. I love my seniors, and um, right now, currently, I'm helping in a like a little thrift store coat closet, so I don't know. I just like to dabble in all community service, so. That's awesome. Well, thank you. Well, we're just going to dive right in. Okay. And can you just kind of, let's start with what factors in your life pushed or led you to the choice of abortion? And how old were you when you chose abortion? Well, to be honest with you, I mean, so much of this stuff is foggy in my memory. And I, I think yeah. that is what's so difficult about this. Because I think for a lot of things I've blocked out, some things I haven't. But I remember being a sophomore in high school uh, when I um, became pregnant and I was promiscuous uh, before that. I was sexually active around the age of 15. And um, I found out you know, that I was pregnant shortly right after my 16th birthday. Um, but leading up to the choice of abortion, I think there were so many aspects that there were so many like life circumstances that played a part in me having an abortion. And I, the one thing that I think really comes to my mind is I was an, uh, you know, abused, sexually abused several times in my life. And once, you know, when I was little, it was um, by a child and a child doing things to another child. And so for so long, I thought, oh, we were just it wasn't no big deal. Um, kids do that. And so I think for so long, I kind of suppressed that. And yeah. then, um, but I realized that I was feeling things that a six year old should not be feeling. I was doing things that a six year old shouldn't be doing. And um, it just kind of escalated from there. And then later on, I was 14, I was molested by a 27 year old man. And um, that in itself brought its challenges because I had so many like guilty feelings that came along with it because I was not only, um, you know, I was a teenager, I was going through hormones and I had normal hormone like girl feelings, but at the same time, I knew what was happening to me was not okay. It wasn't normal, yeah. but it was that balance of what's happening to me is not okay. But at the same time, I was having like feelings of, wow, I hate to say that I enjoyed it, but, and so that, that threw me for a loop. I, it just absolutely devastated me because I felt so much guilt because I didn't know how to feel about yeah. the sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. I can so relate to that. And it doesn't make any sense even today, but I mean, because we have similar backgrounds in, in the abuse in our early childhood, but understanding, and I, and I don't understand it, but understanding how the one thing that was so vile to me that had been done to me is what I turned to in my early preteen and teenage years makes no sense, but that's exactly what I did. And that's what so many girls like us. Absolutely. It's like, you know, sex and using our bodies, it was the one thing that destroyed our lives, but yet we turned to it to fill voids. And yeah. it's just something that, um, it's just a, you know, it's like a full circle. It just keeps coming around and round and round. And it's like, it was just this vicious cycle I could not get out of. So I found myself very promiscuous and in, you know, situations that I shouldn't be in long before I should have been sexually active. Um, and, you know, I had no self-esteem after the sexual abuse. 
And I just think all those things led to my choice. And also my sister was pregnant at a young age. And so I not only watched what she went through, but I also saw my parents' reactions. And my mother was like a God-fearing woman. And I love my mom to death, but I was not expecting to see her reaction. She wasn't happy. She wasn't excited about it. And my father was very angry as well. But, you know, one thing I've always said is fear does a lot to people. And when people are afraid, they, they don't handle situations the way that they should. But you know, their tears, you know, they were sad, they were crying, but they, it turned to joy and happiness and they loved their grandchild. But for some reason, all the negative things stood out in my mind more than the positive. It outweighed, the negative outweighed the positive. And I always looked at my sister as like this strong person. She was like valedictorian. She was just, she had this strength that resonated in her. And I never felt like I was that strong of a person. Like I was like, if she did it and she struggled, there's no way that I can do this and that I can give this child the life that this child needs. So right. I think that was also a huge turning point into me choosing to have an abortion. Now, did your parents know about your pregnancy? Uh, no. Did your sister know about your pregnancy? No. What my about sister did know. Um, my sister did know. I finally opened up to her about it and she was not... She was never judgmental towards me. Um, my sister was a Christian, uh, but she, I think she knew the struggles of being a mom and you know, she was never judgmental. I don't think that was the option she wanted me to choose. I, I remember her trying to talk me out of it, but it was just kind of like my mind was made up because I was seriously so afraid of going through with it. Um, other than that, I had a good friend from high school that knew and um, she was also pregnant at the exact same time. And I just saw a strength in her that I didn't have. She was like, no, I'm having this baby no matter what, no matter if, the, you know, if he's in my life or not, I'm going through with this pregnancy. And I didn't have that strength. I just, I remember being so just fear driven. Yeah. Wow. It just breaks my heart. Cause like, I know you now. And yeah. I mean, we're not like best friends by any long stretch, but I know you and I follow you and yeah. I know that you're, I know your heart for the Lord. Yeah. And it just breaks my heart that you would ever be in this vulnerable, vulnerable position without having, without seeing the potential that you have. And, and I, and I watch you. And again, again, a lot of it is a little bit distance and from social media. And that's not always exactly the, you know, what everything is happening, yeah. but for this homeschooling dynamic, Jesus loving mom of these yeah. guys. And it breaks my heart that you didn't have that courage and that, you know, some <clears throat> Team ultimately to know the potential that you had to be the mom of the child that you aborted. Um, so how do you think that having an abortion affected your life? I mean, so, so you're in high school, your sister has, is a, is a young mom, your, your friend is going to be a young mom. How did having a friend that was having a baby affect you while you chose to abort and just in general, how did the abortion affect you? Um, my friend is still one of my best friends to this day and we keep in touch, but her child, her, well, 20 some year old child is, is a reminder of, I could have had a child that exact same age. So as we grew together, you know, not that I don't love her child. I do, but that was a constant reminder of the choice that I made, but I do know of God's forgiveness. And I do know that, you know, he has tossed it into the sea of forgetfulness. But through those years, I didn't really, I knew of God's forgiveness, but I just really didn't feel like I was worthy of that forgiveness. And so it was just this weight that was bearing on me. You know, I saw my sister and how she succeeded having um, her children and she went to college and she did all these things. And I just was like stuck. I was just stuck. I was, you know, I literally hated myself. I was very insecure. I had no self-worth. I just, I truly hated myself. I don't know if there's any better term than to do that. I had no self-esteem. Um, and so just watching these other people thrive, it was a constant reminder of, wow, they did that. But I still, I still had this lingering of thought of, 
I couldn't have done that. I couldn't have done that. I would not have been strong enough to do that. Yeah. So for just a minute, um, like I, I kind of think I'm hearing the, I mean, I, I know there was regret from having the abortion and it didn't, again, I don't want to put words in your mouth. So please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm hearing like, even though you were intimidated by what you saw as an example of what might could have been for you, uh -huh. the fact that you chose abortion didn't really solve your problems either. And so right. think for a second about that, um, what kind of, you know, I don't, I don't really know, I guess my question, but um, I guess for my, for the, for the person sitting out there that is a sophomore in high school that might come across this video on Facebook or YouTube that thinks I can't do it. I have a friend that's doing it. My big sister's doing it, but I can't do it. And talk to me for a minute about that girl. What would you say to the 16 or 17 year old you today? I would say that God never gives us more than we can bear. And that somehow, even though I don't believe my promiscuity and all that was the will of God, God allowed me to have that child. And it, he, he gave that precious being to me for a reason. And I chose to let my fear be stronger than my faith. And that needed to be flipped. My faith needed to be stronger than my fear. And I needed to trust God and I needed to reach out to more people and not be afraid of being embarrassed or humiliated. And I needed to draw strength from other people because I didn't feel I had it in myself. And I think that's one thing. If you don't feel strong enough, it's okay. But there are other people around you that can surround you and love you and support you. And are some people maybe going to be a little hurt or upset? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean they're going to stop loving you. That doesn't mean that they're not going to just you know, surround themselves around you and support you and lift you up when you're down. Yeah. I love that. I love that so much. Um, so, so you were a believer, you were a Christian when you chose abortion, correct? Yes, ma'am. In my kind of history of working with women who are post-abortive for some reason, and it kind of makes sense to me, but for those that were not Christians when they had their abortion, Sometimes it's a little bit easier for them to grasp onto God's forgiveness when they become Christians, including the choice of abortion. But for those women who were believers in Jesus when they chose abortion, really owning the forgiveness um, that is offered by Jesus Christ, right. his redemption on the cross, his death on the cross and resurrection, all that, you know, gospel stuff that we love. And, right. <laughs> um, for some reason, for those women like you, um, accepting his forgiveness in reference to your abortion is more difficult. Did you experience that? And, and, and talk to me a little bit about that and, and how were you able to finally receive forgiveness from your abortion? I think my faith was, I was very worried. You know, I always was afraid that if I screwed up, I lost my salvation. And, you know, one thing that I, as I've grown in the Lord is that it says nothing can pluck us from his hand. And that's one thing that I've really clung to for so long is like, okay, Lord, I screwed up. I made mistakes. And I know that I was not in your will, but you love me and you forgive me. And that is really what has gotten me through. But it was very hard because I was like, Lord, I knew you. And yet I made these choices, but there's a difference in knowing the Lord or, you know, being saved and then living your life for the Lord. There's, yeah. that's a difference. Like you can still be in sin and have known the Lord, you know? So yeah. that was a balance for me. And I, I was really like, I kind of, my dad was, um, kind of agnostic. My mother was a God fearing woman. And so, you know, I just kind of had this, I guess it was just a little bit of hard circumstances around my faith anyways, because I would always take myself to church. And so my faith was just always something that I wasn't real clear on. I knew I'd given my life to the Lord at yeah. a young age, but yet I wasn't living my life for the Lord, if that makes any sense. Totally, so it does. Yeah. As I got older, I was like, wow, Lord, okay, I'm going to recommit myself to you. Now, did that mean that my life was 
peaches and cream? No, I still struggle because I hadn't dealt with my abortion and, and many other things in my life, the sexual abuse. And there was just a lot of things that were still impacting my life. But, you know, once I've like recommitted my life to the Lord and, and really grasped God's forgiveness for me is when I was able to move forward and just thinking back to the evening or I was actually doing homeschool with the kids and they had went into the room and I just felt the Holy Spirit say, it's time to tell your children. And so I called him in and I knew it was a now or never moment. It was like, I'm going to tell my children or I'm going to be scared and I will never be this brave again because I knew the strength was from the Lord at that moment. And so I called them in and I began to tell them and my sons, they both cried, obviously. And, uh, but I'll never forget my son, Aiden patted me on the leg. He says, mama, you know, you're forgiven. Right. And I said, wow. yes, son. I said, if I didn't know I was forgiven, I wouldn't be sharing this story with you today, but only because of God's grace and his love and his forgiveness. Am I able to stay here today and tell you about what God has done in my life? And so I'll never forget that moment. That was my beginning to healing. And then just. You know, I would say, you know, God directing my steps. I mean, there's really no other explanation, but uh, my friend Linda Chapman, she, we went to a women's retreat at uh, Westlake Baptist Church, and there I met Tammy Whitehurst. And then, you know, with my, like, encouragement of my friend, she took me over there, and I met Tammy, and she, I began to kind of open up to her and just say, like, I feel like the Lord's wanting me to open up about my abortion. And she said, do you know BJ Garrett? And I said, no, but I think I need to meet her. So <laughs> that's how I, that's how I got introduced to care. And it was just like, I would honestly just, I have to give God the glory because it was all him directing my steps to care. Yeah. Well, I love that. And I love Tammy Whitehurst first off and yeah. just a side note, a little plug for Christian communicators conference. It's going to be in Dallas this year. So I highly recommend attending that conference for anyone that is wanting to, to tell their story publicly or even on a small scale, any scale from tiny to large, you never know what God's going to do. It's an amazing conference, but again, side note. Um, yeah, she's, she's an amazing woman. She's funny and you know, she really does um, help, you know, make your heart joyful. So yeah, she really, really does. And she's such an encourager. And I, one, of the, one of the things that I love so much about Tammy and her ministry is that she is all about collaborating, not competition. And even like doing, you know, these Testimony Tuesday programs. I mean, she's one of my biggest supporters and we're not in competition. She, right. you know, she's, we're about spurring each other on and- Absolutely you know, and it's just, it's a dynamic philosophy for kingdom work to be in connection with each other, not competition. So I love that. Well, I think that's, what's so beautiful about it is, you know, we need each other. Like yeah. one person can't accomplish everything. We need each other and we are all women of God and we are all in one body of Christ. And so it takes everybody, it takes a joint effort. And so we shouldn't be in competition one, with one another. And I think as a society, we need to be lifting each other up more and encouraging one another because it's really about saving souls and it's yeah. about getting people healed. And that's really why we are on this earth in the first place is to just yeah. bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to people on this earth. Yeah. So. Yeah, I love that so much. Well, we're kind of, we're almost out of time. We have about five minutes left. Okay. And I already kind of asked you, you know, what would you say to the, you know, the young you uh, facing an unplanned pregnancy, but any kind of last thing that you want to share about um, the heartache of abortion or the importance of getting help from a past abortion, or maybe, you know, maybe something to someone out there that's facing an unplanned or crisis pregnancy kind of kind of your last little you know shout out here's here's your stage share share your heart i think the biggest thing i have to say is if you are thinking about getting an abortion it will not solve your problems it will just amplify them a million times over um there is always someone who if you don't feel like you have the strength or capability of, of taking care of a child there is someone out there that will um, and there are always families in need of, of 
beautiful children. So um, I think adoption needs to be brought up more and advocated more and abortion definitely needs to, you know, just this whole society right now with abortion is just infuriating to me. Um, but if you have gone through with an abortion, um, just know that you are not an evil person. Uh, we all make horrible choices. Um, God says there's not one good, no, not one. And there's only one perfect being, and that was Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So, um, you know, reach out for, for, you know, reach out for healing and um, ask God for forgiveness. And, and through that, you will be able to move on with your life. It's never going to be easy. There's always a sting every time I talk about my abortion. It stings. It's not something I'm proud of. It's not something I'm happy about, but it's something that happened. And the only thing that I can do is make some beauty out of ashes. It's, you know, I'm beautifully broken is what I like to say. Um, God, God came in, mended me. And now if I can help the life of one young lady uh, from either making that choice or heal from her choice of abortion, um, I don't feel like my little baby's life was taken in vain. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, one of the things I say, and, and obviously I don't think that I'm righting a wrong when I help women. No. Somehow for me, it's almost like my children that were aborted, it's almost like their life has more value with each person I'm able to help heal from their past abortion. And again, I don't justify my choice of abortion by doing that. I know you're not either, but it just, it validates the humanity of my children that their life had purpose. Even though I chose to end their life, their life had purpose and their legacy is living on even though I made the choice to end their life. And so, um, so thank you so much for that. And, you know, I, again, I just thank you for, for joining me. I thank you for your willingness to be vulnerable and share your story. I know that it's not easy. I get to do this often, especially now with this new Testimony Tuesday program, but right. every single time it's scary. And, um, and because not everybody's going to get it. And I, and I understand that now, and I've had loved ones in my life that didn't get it. And abortion's a hard topic and it's, it's ugly. Abortion is ugly, plain and simple. There's no graceful way to discuss the choice that we made. There just isn't. And, but it's happening. It's happening every day. It's happening in our churches. It's happening in our communities. It's happening in the, in the church. And, and we have to give these girls real resources and empower them to not make the same choice that we felt like we, we didn't have any other way to, any other choice to make. So, right. Uh, if you have had an abortion in your past, please contact us. We have not stopped doing ministry at CARE. We're doing, we've had to change some things, but we can still do a three-day weekend or retreat. Um, we can do one-on-one -on -one or virtual. Um, the options are really open, open-ended at this point. So please, if you're watching this program tonight and you have an abortion in your past, please, please give us a call and uh, let us help you out. Uh, God bless you and hope to see you back next Tuesday night at 8 p.m. for Testimony Tuesday. Bye.